an electromagnetic wave has a magnetic field given by minus 8.25 nanoteslas, cosine of 1.38 times 10 to the fourth radius per meters x, plus omega t in the y direction. In which direction is the wave traveling? What is the frequency of the wave? And write the vector equation for the electric field. To solve this problem, let's review the basics of electromagnetic waves. Remember, an electromagnetic wave is an oscillation of the electric field and magnetic field. This oscillation is self-sustaining due to the time rate of change of the electric and magnetic fluxes. So let's say we had an electromagnetic wave that was in the form of a sine function. This right here that is oscillating parallel to the y-axis, we'll call this the electric field of the electromagnetic wave. This electric field oscillates vertically or parallel to the y direction with positive and negative amplitudes. Remember that the cross product of an electric field and a magnetic field will tell you the direction that the wave is traveling. So here, if we just applied our right-hand rule and, and wanted our thumb to go in the positive x direction, that would mean if our thumb is ending up in the positive x direction, the wave would be traveling in the positive x direction. And so the oscillation of the magnetic field to get that wave moving in the positive x direction would have to be perpendicular to the oscillation of the electric field, so in the z direction. And it has to be in a particular orientation along the z axis. So here, if you tried your right hand rule to cross the electric and the magnetic fields, you would get your thumb pointing in the positive x direction. Now we know that wave functions or wave equations that this is based on have a solution that's periodic. So here, since we have a sign for both the electric and magnetic fields, we could say that the electric field has a certain amplitude, so the amplitude of oscillation of the electric field. I'll just actually call this amplitude E sub naught. Sine of Okay, 2 pi over the wavelength. Now remember, the wavelength is the distance a wave travels in one oscillation. x, because we are moving along the x-axis. And now, since we are moving in the positive x direction, this is going to be minus 2 pi times the frequency of oscillation. Now remember the frequency of oscillation is equal to 1 over the period. The period is the time it takes to complete oscill one oscillation. So the frequency is the number of oscillations per second. And this is times time. Remember that the sign in front of the time term indicates the direction the wave is traveling. And it's kind of opposite of what you would think. Here, a negative sign means that the wave is traveling in the positive x direction. While if it were a plus sign, that would mean that the wave is traveling in the negative x direction. So in our diagram, the wave is traveling in the positive x direction, so that's a minus sign. The wave starts with a positive amplitude, so at t equals 0 for this sine curve, the wave has 0 amplitude, or the electric field has 0 amplitude. And it's oscillating parallel to the y-axis, so we will just put j hat there. Now we could do the same thing for the magnetic field. 
the magnetic field has a certain amplitude, which we will call the amplitude of the magnetic field B0. It is also oscillating with the same frequency and wavelength and as the electric field. And because they are self-sustaining operation oscillations that depend on each other, the magnetic field is also moving to the right as it oscillates. It's oscillating along the z-axis, beginning with the positive z-axis. So we'll put a k, a k hat there, indicating the positive z-direction. Now, one thing to note is the speed in which this wave is moving. Now, we know that the velocity of the wave is in the direction of the cross product of the electric and the magnetic field. The speed is a constant, which is given as the ratio of the magnitude of the electric field to, to the magnetic field. And this ratio is equal to 2.9979 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which is the speed of light. Now, one more thing to note, that all traveling waves, the velocity is equal to the product of the wavelength and the frequency. So since this wave is moving at the speed of light, we have a handy relationship between the wavelength, the frequency, and the speed of the wave. So let's now work on solving the problem that we were given.